my name is Graham Smith, and this is Sketchbook Fury, the Art Ninja's Guidebook. And this week we're talking about overcoming those creative blocks called perfection paralysis, white page fever, or even portfolioitis. One of the biggest fears is just is not knowing what to draw. For the artists out there that um, that don't know what to draw, I have I have some common advice that I give pretty much everybody and it's what you know I learned it's what they taught me back in art school back in the day and that's to draw the world around you you know draw from life drawing something helps you to understand it the more you understand your subject the uh, less there is to fear about it and the less afraid you be to draw those things so understanding your subject is is something that will take the fear out of it and let you uh, draw. Returning to the original source for your information is the key here. If you work from photos, your information has already been passed through another artist's filter. It's already been edited. This is secondary information. the world around you specifically gives you a specific insight into just your your individual world and that's you know that's what's interesting that's what makes you an individual because the things that you draw in your world are going to be different than the things that I have in mind you know and that's going to be the great part about you know like where we could share ideas and imagery and things like that why we draw period is to help us understand the world. I remember when I was first started, um, you know, sketchbooking for a purpose. You know, when I decided that I wanted to do it every day. So I decided that in the morning, when I drink my coffee, was a great time to, to draw my book. I didn't exactly know what to draw every day. It takes, it takes effort to think of the ideas, right? So I would sit there with my sketchbook in the morning, knowing, you know, and I'd write some lists and I'd wonder what to draw and I would sit there and drink my coffee, and I'd look at the cup. When I was in school, my teachers told me to draw the world around me, and this is the world around me. There's my coffee cup. So one day I'll draw it in ballpoint pen, the next day I'll draw it in pencil, the next day I would draw it in magic marker. I would get a brush pen, and I'd be like, oh, I guess I'll draw my coffee cup in brush pen today. And next thing you know, you have this whole little book full of uh, a drawing of your coffee cup every day. You know, it's not what you set out to do, but you ended up with a really cool thing. So you never know what's going to happen when you start. You just have to start. Um, the idea might seem silly at first, but repeat it over time, you know, you're gonna learn something about yourself. You're gonna find out something. And when you learn something about yourself, you know, you could, that's when you tell it to somebody else. But now you're a communicator. Now you're an artist. You're sharing your experience with the world um, about your world through your drawing, and that's a and that's a great thing for uh, you know a sketchbooker. One of the number one complaints is, dude, I've got no time, zero time. One piece of advice I always give to artists by practicing in their sketchbook 
is this. Combine your art time with the things you already do and the people that you want to be with. Another way to overcome this perfection issue and the time, if you, time issue is to give yourself a time limit. The time limit helped me to overcome the feeling that whatever I had to draw had to be some big, great thing. The important thing at that time was that I was habit building, uh, that I was drawing something every day, but I was on the path, the path to continual improvement. And that's the point. Build a habit, start small, Overcome your fear little by little, and next thing you know, draw a little something every day. Not a big thing, but something. The point is to get on the path, just to draw anything at all. Don't worry if it's perfect, just block out the time. Move your pencil on the paper. Let ideas beget ideas. Let one thing flow into the next. And you'll be on the path too. One of the things that I've come to learn to trust is that drawing, just the act of drawing in your sketchbook begets ideas. So you could just, you could start off like not knowing what to do and just start moving that pencil on the paper. Just start drawing things, anything. Ideas come from the act of drawing. You draw one little thing and then you draw another little thing and then you learn, how to say, oh, I could draw that thing a little bit better. And then you notice these two sketches next to each other start to have a relationship together. You know, they, they bounce off of each other, you know what I mean? Ideas spring forth when an artist imagines the relationships between the different things that he's drawn on the page. Seemingly random doodles are really your you know, your subconscious ideas kind of like bubbling to the top. Find the ideas within them and refine them and slowly develop them into the big cool thing that you've imagined. It just doesn't, um, you know, you just don't start drawing at the top of the page and by the time you're at the bottom, it's amazing. You have to work at it. So understanding that process alleviates some of the perfection paralysis that you might be feeling when you start a new sketchbook, when you start a new project, when you begin to work on a new piece. I suggest drawing the subjects you dread the most over and over and over again, like hands and feet and faces and ellipses, wheels. You just keep practicing and practicing that over and over again in your sketchbook until you're the artist that always nails it. Practice makes perfect. That's what they said. But to me, applied practice makes perfect faster. This is a technique I learned from my musician friends. When a musician is learning a new complex piece, um, they play the whole thing and they find out the places where they trip up, where they always make the mistakes. And then they focus solely on those areas and practice that passage, that piece, until they nail it. And then they move on. That's what you could do in your sketchbook. That's what your sketchbook is for. You can do your applied practice in here. So all 
artists are on a continuum, you know, this path of constant improvement. You know, and it's hard to be satisfied with your current work when you're looking ahead or when you're measuring yourself against the work of others. Um, no matter where you are on the continuum, you're always looking at the next rung of the ladder. You're always looking up. So you feel like yours, your work isn't good enough and whatever's next um, is going to be better. Strive for continual improvement, not perfection. Every little thing in your sketchbook doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, we know that you're working on it. You're sneaking up on it little by little. You're getting better and better over time. You're on the same continuum as all the other artists, and we're all improving. So when a visual artist is trying to learn to draw the figure or a motorcycle or anything complex, you can do the same thing. Practice it in your sketchbook. Draw the parts you hate to draw. Draw the parts that give you difficulty. Draw those hands over and over and over again. The eyes over and over and over again. What's okay to draw? The answer is anything's okay to draw. As long as you're drawing, you're going to be improving. It's fun to create something from your mind, with your hands, that now appears in the world. Anything is kind of magical. Please play with your art toys, play with your art supplies. Have fun experimenting with your supplies. Put this color next to that. Exaggerate. Have playtime. Have fun in your sketchbook. Have fun with your sketchbook. That's the point. As long as you're having fun, you know, and it's, you know, something fun to do, you will continue the process. There, if this is your first sketchbook, please post a photo of the cover of your first sketchbook and the advanced artists, help the beginners out. Post some, post some of your great drawings, give them some inspiration. Thanks for coming by. Let's, let's jump back in the book and do some drawings. trick that my homie taught me that I'm gonna pass along to you guys. Hopefully it'll take a little bit of the pressure off. The basic idea is that you take your crappy sketchbook pages that you hate and get some gesso and paint right over it. So it's a little safety escape route. One of the cool things is that when you paint over a drawing, a lot of times the ink and the whatever you used underneath it bleeds up through. And I love that, those happy accidents, because it creates you know, an amazing texture, something you wouldn't set out to do, but something you could definitely work with once you have it. So this is uh, one of the exciting things is you always have a second chance. It's your sketchbook. You can do what you want.
Thanks for stopping by.